Happy Friday, everybody. Thank you. Being a happy Friday, let's talk about graveyards. Why is it that graveyards have fences? Keep the dead people in. Or keeping them from getting out. People are dying to get in. People are just dying to get in. All right, if you didn't like that one, this one's not going to be any better. Um, why is it that trees have so many friends? Got a lot of branches. You're getting there. Branches out. Yeah, trees are very good at branching out. <laughs> Describe what you experience before you die. Yes. Like I said, happy Friday. So, um, you're in an elevator when it's cable snaps. Yay. Describe what you experience before you die and go to that fenced-in graveyard. Yes. Panic. Okay. Emotional panic. Um, what a... What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's think about what you'll experience physically. What, what are you going to feel? Yes. Just be like a Okay, so if you're in free fall, how heavy would you feel? Okay, would you feel anything? Would you feel like lighter? Maybe you'd get pushed up to the top, up to the ceiling of that elevator? Okay. It's kind of an interesting thing to think about. Um, so the real question is then, you know, you don't weigh as much as the elevator does. Um, do heavy things, <laughs> do heavy things fall faster, slower, or the same speed as objects that are lighter? Uh, well, it depends. Cause like a Lana? Leather. Sorry. Sorry. Slower. slower, perhaps? Same speed. Same speed. Same speed. Yeah. Okay. Like, it's it's different because like it depends on the circumstance. When you're talking about a feather, like the feather's gonna like. Yeah, because there's air resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So one of the big science experiments from Galileo's time, we've talked about him a lot yesterday. Uh. So he went to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, is the story, and he dropped two objects of very different mass, and they hit the ground at the same time, and that would be the same result uh, if we can you know, get rid of air resistance. If we get rid of air resistance, regardless of how heavy an object is, they're going to fall at the exact same rate. They're going to speed up at the same rate. So what this has to do with the elevator is that if all objects fall at the same rate of speed, you and the elevator are falling at the same speed. So just like what Sam said at the beginning of this, you're going to be in free fall, both you and the elevator. So what you'll really experience for those couple seconds is complete weightlessness. So you can write down weightlessness for your answer for this one. Yeah, it'll be a good time before it hits. <laughs> Realistically, though, um, up you know until the 1930s. Uh, since then, elevators have gotten more safe. Even if the cable snaps, there are a lot of safety mechanisms in place uh, that you won't end up dying. Things with springs on the bottom to you know back up cables. So you don't have anything to worry about, despite, you know, when you walk into the elevator here. I, I feel like every time I walk in there, I'm transported into a run-down, insane asylum yeah. elevator. Uh, so why despite, does so why does it look so creepy in there? There's well, like literally wood behind it. Like, they have it done. Yeah, it does look nice, but I think the pads are just there to, yeah. you know, keep it from getting bumped into because people push a lot of, um, you know, tool things on there it might hit. Yeah. 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 The best thing you could do, and what I would do, is I would lay on my back, and I'd put my hands under my head like yeah. this. I was say, like, um, your head yeah. Yeah. Uh, what you would not want to do. Um, yeah. That's 
that's going to be one of the MythBuster things. So I don't want to give that away. What about a headstand? <laughs> good, good one though. Headstand. That would be probably the worst thing you could do. <laughs> what you would not want to do is if there's a handle, you know, like hanging from the ceiling. You would not want to hold on to those because it'll rip your arms off. What? Um, it'll rip oh, your yeah. arms off. How? No, it's nice. to stop. Yeah. Oh. You'll just hit it, and your arms will keep going. They're higher than your body. Yeah, just the force of. Wow, this went further than it did last physics and then class. You're just oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you're spurting blood everywhere. Absolutely. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, Keegan. Is it, okay. Where is this gonna go? Uh, ow, ow, ow. Is it true that like? Because that reminds me, like I heard that a girl I don't know if it was on the giant drop, one of those like really big drop things, one of her hairs got stuck in like the mechanism, and when it went down, um, like a bunch of her like her hair got like ripped out, like and her head is like balding and like. Like, I heard, like, Scalped her? Like, yeah. Or, like, I heard that one girl got, like, decapitated. Her hair got stuck in the Is that even possible? That, that like, sounds amazing? kind of familiar. I'd, I'd have to look it up. I'm not sure exactly what it would attach to at the top, because, I mean, yeah. it's not like you're hitting a ceiling. I'd, I'd have to look into that more before I completely endorse the decapitation. That would suck. I'd hate to be scalped, or, like, especially on a roller coaster. On a roller coaster? <laughs> okay. So let's talk about yeah, force and physics. How about that? So again, we talked yesterday about what force is. Force is a push or it is a pull. And there's kind of a process that we want to undergo when we're solving these force problems. And it basically goes something like this. This should look very familiar. You don't have to write this down if you don't want, but we will be taking notes today. This is the three-step process that you're probably aware of from the last time we dealt with force diagrams in the inertia section. You create a force diagram. You create a force equation from that diagram, and then you'll have enough information to solve for what the question is asking. And we follow that procedure in all these problems. Uh, and that's what we're going to do today. You can title your notes, Force equals mass times acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. These are people. You're going to want to leave a good amount of space between each stick person. So today's discussion is mostly all about elevators because these provide a good example for our force equations where, you know, in the inertia section, we set all our equations equal to zero. But things aren't always going to be that simple. Starting in this chapter, we don't just set those equations equal to zero. We set them equal to something else, and that's just ma. So that's the easiest way to think about this. Let's talk about this person down here. He's a happy fella. And it's Friday in his stick world, too. And he goes to a skyscraper. And he gets on to an elevator on that skyscraper. Oh, oh, oh. I, thought going, I thought you were going somewhere else. My brain just went somewhere completely else. Yeah, I thought you were going to say, like, he jumps off the <laughs> yeah. skyscraper. It's oh. Friday. He's all happy. He goes Thinking to the skyscraper. That. And then he commits suicide. <laughs> I think I think I used up all my darkness at the beginning of this class. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> and he's very happy when he hits the floor. <laughs> so, he's on the bottom floor. He starts there. He doesn't get there from the top. And he gets on the elevator at that floor. When you get on the elevator, it starts to accelerate up. Yeah. 
So he's accelerating up. Now we got to think about what kind of acceleration this is, whether it's positive or negative. Now, he's going up, so that's positive, and he's picking up speed, so that's positive. Positive and a positive makes a positive, and we're all still happy. Now, we got to do a force diagram for this fellow, too. When you get on that elevator and it starts to accelerate up, do you feel heavier or lighter than normal? Uh, lighter. Like, um, like, okay, so I used to work at Stonefire. <laughs> they had the little leapfrog thing. Okay. It's, uh, it's one of those rides that goes up and down. Sure. Same thing with roller coasters. Like, when you go up and you feel that, like, feeling in your stomach. Okay. So you feel lighter when you go up. Yeah. yeah that's different from what I usually experience. Really? <laughs> when I get in an elevator on the ground floor and it starts to go up, I feel a little bit heavier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, don't. Yeah. Okay. Well, take special note next time you're in an elevator. We'll go through the four different scenarios here and we'll see how well they match up. So you feel a little bit heavier. And, you know, your force of gravity is always going to be the same. So we'll just have our force of gravity down. This arrow is not going to change. In fact, I'll just make it a little bit smaller so I don't lose too much space here. So if you feel heavier on that elevator when it's accelerating up, that means your normal force is going to be larger than your force of gravity. So that arrow is bigger. And that's that. Now eventually, because he's going up in a skyscraper, he's going to get to a point where that elevator isn't picking up speed anymore. For a while, it's just traveling at a constant speed. What's your acceleration when your speed is constant? Very good. So constant speed going up. In that case, your force diagram will have arrows of the same length. Force of gravity and normal force will be the same size. You're not going to feel any heavier or lighter if the elevator is not accelerating or decelerating. Now eventually, you get close to the top. And from your experiences, when you get close to the top of your destination, you're going to feel either lighter or heavier. What do you think? Do you feel lighter or heavier when you get near the top and it starts to slow down? I don't know. Maybe lighter. <laughs> lighter would be true. There we go. There we go. So you're going to feel a little bit lighter. Yeah, that's, um, what, I meant. that's what I meant. Oh. <laughs> Make sense now? Oh, I was explaining yeah. at the top when you were talking oh, about the okay. bottom. Yeah, we were talking about the bottom before. Yeah, you get you get lighter the higher you go. Basically. Well, yeah, I was right. Heck. So um, if we are slowing down on the way up, that's going to be a negative acceleration. Because we are decelerating, that's a negative. But we're going up, that's a positive. And a positive and a negative make a negative. Well, since what? <laughs> since math. So here, force of gravity is still the same length, but because we feel lighter, normal force is less. Is less. Absolutely. So we're half done. So he goes to the top of the skyscraper, he walks to the edge, and then he goes back into the elevator. So he gets back in the elevator, and it starts to accelerate going down. What kind of acceleration? Positive, negative, or zero? It's negative. Negative, exactly. 
because we're going down, that's negative. We're accelerating, that's positive. So negative and a positive makes a negative. So when we get in that elevator at the top and we start to accelerate down, do we feel heavier or lighter? Lighter. Lighter. So once again, normal force is smaller than force of gravity. Then again, we get to the point where you're traveling at a constant speed for a while. It's just the same thing with backwards. Yep. So as long as you're at a constant speed, your forces feel the same. You don't feel any heavier or any lighter than normal. So those arrows should be the same length there. And finally, you are about to get to the ground floor all safe and sound, despite where we kind of began our discussion today. And when you get near the floor, are you feeling heavier or lighter? Well, heavier. heavier, yeah. And is that a positive or a negative acceleration? Positive. Positive, exactly. Down. Yep. You are decelerating down, so those are two negatives. So that gives you a positive acceleration. And just like you so astutely said, we have a force of gravity that is smaller than our normal force because we feel heavier when we get closer to the bottom. So that's how these force diagrams work in an elevator. Now one thing we do have to make sure we take note of is for the homework which will be due on Tuesday, um, you have to know whether or not you have a positive or a negative acceleration. The problems just tell you how fast you are going up or down. It doesn't say if that number is positive or negative. So you do have to make sure that you recognize when acceleration is positive or negative here. All right, let's do some problems with numbers, and then that should be good for today. Yes, it is. Yeah, he's awesome. When did he play? I got my joke. When did he, he play? He played like up until 2011. Like from like 2000. Yeah. Like, was he part of the championship team? Yes, he was. About 2000 to 2011 or so, yeah. Yeah. That might have been his last year. It was. Yeah. That's got to be sweet. Wait, no, we were on your last, last year. Yeah. And lost, and then I was really sad. He but actually. I feel bad for him, well, sort of, because he did win a Super Bowl, but I remember watching uh, the Super Bowl, and he actually got injured and had to leave, like, after the first quarter. He did catch one pass, though, I think, at least. So he contributed. So yeah. He say, hey, I was actually part of it. Jordy had a touchdown. Jordy, Jordy had Jordy several. Had clutch touchdown. Uh, Crosby was on that team, too. Nick Collins had a pick six. Wait, that was a good year. Wasn't it Nelson that got, like, that... Really clutch touchdown, like across the field, right? Yes, it was. Oh, yeah. He also caught flack for dropping a few passes that game, but he, uh, yeah. I'd say he recovered pretty well. The only thing I remember from that game was Aaron Rodgers winning a car. That's like the only thing I remember. <laughs> Clay Matthews forced fumble that game. Yeah. And hey, you know, we got into the playoffs like on the wild card spot yeah, that year. Through, we were like yep. away the entire time. That's crazy. Three. Let's get it. Let's run it back this year. You know what I'm saying? Run it back, dude. From Brady's gonna kill us. Like run it back I hate to from say, it. Years yeah. Ago. yeah, and I hate to say it, but Brady's gonna beat us. Like I, I don't have time. Oh, Tom Brady. Jeez, what is wrong with it's Tom Brady? <laughs> yeah, we have Aaron Rodgers in his best year yet. Yeah, well, yeah. Tom Brady is just better. Tom I Brady statistically is much much worse than Aaron Rodgers. Okay, but he comes up. <laughs> 
And Rogers, as much as I love him, I just have no confidence in him. <laughs> Keegan, I literally want to. Packers are totally going to win. Literally. Totally going to win. Absolutely. Zero back. doubt. And I'm saying this on camera. What? Is Crosby back? I think so. Good. I don't know for sure. Okay, we might, we might win. I didn't mean to physically threaten you on camera. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> one one thing you got to keep in mind too, um, is it a T or a you know, that's a T. Okay. At. You know, Brady uh, is from you know the Boston area, so he's okay with cold weather. But the, the rest of that is. team, Tampa Bay, Ooh, playing no, in no, Green no. Bay in January. Also, hey, okay, I got a couple points. They beat us. Bakhtiari got hurt in the second quarter, and we had to jumble together our line. Our line has been really good. Mm-hmm. So we should be pretty good down. against their D. Our secondary, you had Kevin King back. He was injured that game. Our running backs are good. Um, I don't see any pressure. Well, yeah. yeah. The D line is getting beastly too. Our run defense has gotten better. Oh, my God. Rod Phillips is like Adam. He's for pressure. Yeah, but he probably won. Yeah, we brought that to Rod Williams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was cool. Neat little, neat little play there. So, if we are accelerating down, is our acceleration positive or negative? Uh, negative. Negative, absolutely. Yeah. So we have to make sure we know that heading in. So the main question for this guy here is how heavy is he going to feel? So the elevator is accelerating down at 2 meters per second squared. Now if the question is how heavy does he feel, are we going to try and solve for force of gravity or normal force? Normal force. Because force of gravity doesn't change. It's always the same. Normal force represents how heavy you feel. Normal force also represents the force that the floor exerts on you. Uh, those numbers change. Force of gravity stays the same. So if I want to do this, remember that regular process. Force diagram, force equation, solve. So force diagram. Gravity down, and he feels heavier than normal. So normal force arrow is going to be bigger than force of gravity arrow. Because, wait a minute, no, that's wrong. That's backwards. So force of gravity is bigger than normal force, so he's going to feel lighter than normal. Yep, good catch. Now, that's our diagram. That's all we need for the diagram. Force equation is next. So force is up, minus force is down. Normal force up, minus gravity down, equals, well, in the last chapter, we always set these equal to zero. That was when we were either not moving or we had a constant speed. We don't have that luxury anymore. Is it 55? Is it 55? Uh, not quite. <clears throat> well, I mean, you're sort of right. Antonio Brown, though. Newton's second law says... Net force equals mass times acceleration. So instead of setting these equations equal to zero, we set them equal to ma. That's the main difference. Oh, so 110. Yes. So step three, solve. We're looking for normal force. Let's get it by itself. So I'm going to move force of gravity over here. That'll make it positive. And don't forget force of gravity is simply mg. Force of gravity is just mass times g. So we have ma plus mg, and we can just plug those numbers right in. 55 kilograms times an acceleration of negative 2 plus 55 times, what's g? Well, what's G by itself, though? 9.8. 9.8. Very good. Oh, wow. This splits. Impressive. Not quite. Just so you can. <laughs> I cannot lie. Not on camera. What was that, uh, Michael? That's what 9.81. You did this and you got 9 point something? Separate. Separate. Well, well, I got, well, when 
Oh, okay. So you did the more specific number. <laughs> I got um, 53.9 points. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, for this? Okay. So, yeah, that's what you'd get for this portion. When you do the math and you combine it all together, what I ended up with was 429 newtons. So, yeah, this should then be less than what he would normally feel like. Because what he'd normally feel like is 55 times 9.8, and we're subtracting this from that. Now, I know it's kind of hard to, it's easy to get lost with these numbers because we're using newtons, and nobody uses newtons here. So, uh, we're used to dealing with pounds. Just to kind of help you bring this into something that you can, you know, wrap your mind around. If we're looking at kilograms, if you take your mass in kilograms and you multiply it by two or so, that's how heavy you feel in pounds. So if you take this, multi specifically it would be 2.2. But if you just multiply it by two, that's a good ballpark answer. Multiply this by two, that's your weight in pounds. If you get to the point where you're dealing with newtons, if you divide this by about 5, specifically it would be, I think, 4.45. But if you divide this by 5, that gets you your, your weight in pounds. So it's just kind of an interesting way to do that. Just like, uh, you know, just like in speeds, if you take your velocity in meters per second and you multiply it by 2, that's ballpark how fast you're going in miles an hour. So anyway, just thought that was kind of interesting. That's our answer. Let's do one more, and then that should be good. Fair enough, he's really long. No, it's going to be the same thing, actually. It's like that always happens. It's like, oh, one more, and then it's like 20 years. <laughs> Dang it. I hate that. What? Once. Yeah, it passes over there. I hate that when someone says it's going to be really quick and it takes 20 years. Yeah, that always happens to my mom, so like, it's like angry at that. <laughs> it's like, Keegan, come out of the yard, it's going to be five minutes. But she doesn't realize that I'm incompetent, so it's going to take me like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so same scenario, except now uh, we'll say that we are decelerating, decelerating down, yeah. I'll give you some time to write this. Is it? Yeah. Good. Because we are decelerating down, those are two negatives. Two negatives make a positive. So our acceleration now is a positive value. So now it's just a matter of redoing the same thing we just did. Force diagram, force equation, solve. So when we are decelerating down, do we feel heavier or lighter? Uh, heavier. Yep. So our force equation is going to be, no surprise, up minus down. Normal force minus gravity. Whoops, not equal to zero. FG is going to be a bigger value, yep. Yeah. Um, no, you're going to feel heavier here because you're decelerating on the way down. So normal force is bigger than force of gravity because this represents how heavy you feel. Because force of gravity is just your mass times 9.8. It never changes. Normal force represents if you feel heavier or lighter. If you feel heavier, arrow is bigger. Normal force is bigger. And if you're slowing down on the way down, you feel heavier.
like when you're reaching the ground floor from the top. So we set that equal to ma. No surprise, we end up with the same equation. The only difference is when we plug these numbers in, we have an acceleration that is positive instead of negative. So we do that math, and we get 649. Yeah. As expected, this is a larger value than, than the one we got before. So just to, let's bring this back to the real world here. Uh, so if he weighs 55 kilograms, that means his regular weight is about 120 pounds. So if I want to feel about how heavy he feels here, I go 649 divided by roughly 5. So he feels about 130 pounds here. So he feels 10 pounds heavier than normal. And that's about the sort of thing you'd expect on an elevator. Questions on this? Okay. Speaking of elevators, You guys want an opportunity for extra credit? <laughs> Good. So, if you feel like going to a place that has an elevator and get some extra credit, um, take a little bathroom scale with you, stand on it while you're in the elevator, and just take a little video on how it changes as you go up and down. Uh, you can't use this one. Um, it has to be away from the building. Uh, and Unfortunately, you know, most bathroom scales now are digital, so it doesn't really show you the change as it changes. But if you've got an old school one like this, maybe your grandparents have one that's left over, uh, you can pretty easily see how the needle changes as you go up and down in that elevator. So if you want a few points of extra credit, video yourself doing that. I think that's everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you'll have a good amount of time to get rocking on this homework. Again, it's not due until Tuesday.